right, so I want to go through a couple examples that use a scanner object. In particular, um, we want to see how we use the scanner object to get input from the user, but also see how it can sort of exist within main and then be sent as a parameter to a method or whether it can be defined within the method. And we'll do both those things. So um, here's the three methods we're gonna do. Write a method that has no parameters and returns a single token <coughs> of input as a string from the user. Write a method that accepts a scanner object as a parameter and returns a user input line of data. So this, in, in this case, a string, but the entire line they enter. And then write a method that accepts a scanner as a parameter again and returns a user input integer. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to Eclipse and we will do a new Java class and we'll call it um, scanner object example. Use the public static void finish. I make myself a little smaller. Okay, uh, some comments up at the top. Let's put your name, um, the date or today's date, and computer science 142. This program, uh, scanner object example provides methods that give that use scanners object that use scanner objects both as a parameter or defined within the method. This program provides examples of methods that use scanner objects both as a parameter or as defined within the method. Yeah, that's pretty good. I didn't explain it that well, but that's okay. So when we use scanner objects, we need to import <coughs> the Java utilities. Um, import, so if, if we forget this, Eclipse will remind us or even do it, just do it for us. Java.utility, and I'm gonna dot star, which is everything in the utilities, which is fine. And then maybe we just say here, this is for the scanner. Unlike um, integers or um, doubles, scanners or strings are objects. They have both data and functions or methods attached to those objects. And so they're capitalized, capital S for scanner. And you notice a string down here, there's a string type. Capital S is used for string as well. Okay, so in main, we're gonna, do this first problem, let's see what this first problem is. Write a method that has no parameters and returns a single token of input from the user. So the method has no parameters. So we're gonna call this method uh, get token. And then we haven't defined get token, so it's saying that I have an error. So I'm gonna go down here and do public. Let's do tempo public static void for a minute. set up the method so that I can see the passing of parameters, et cetera, is correct. But now if I go back to here, this has no parameters, so we're good there, but it needs to return a single token or a string. So it's not type void, it's type string. And now we have an error, and that error is that this method is expecting a return statement, and we need to return a string, so I'll return an empty string for now. And again, that sets up 
the logic. Um, and then we think about, well, what's missing here? This is fine. I can return the string. Um, the problem is when I call this method, if I don't save what's returned anywhere, it'll just go away. It just disappears. So when I have that return statement, if I want to keep track of that value that gets returned, in this case, a string, I need to save it somewhere. So I'm going to come back over here and have a, declare a string. Um, let's call it input. Oh, let's not. Well, for now, let's call it input, sure. Equals get token. So now we can see the whole setup for this problem is that um, we're going to call get token. It's going to ask the user to enter uh, a string, and then it's going to return that string or that token. Um, I'm not crazy about the word input here because it's not descriptive enough. And we're going to have multiple inputs. We're going to do three of these functions. So um, rather than calling that input, let's call it, um, oh, let's see, I could just use lowercase token. OK. So now within this method, because I did not pass a, 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 I did not pass a scanner object in, we have to declare a scanner object so that we can get user from the get input from the user. So type scanner. Um, because we're getting the user, the input from the console, I'm going to name it console. I can name it whatever I want. Um, scanner console, I'm going to say new, that's the constructor. It's a new scanner and it's accessing the system dot in in order to get the data. So that syntax is coming from either the text or the PowerPoint. You can look that up. Um, but there it is, scanner console equals new scanner system dot in. Now, if I want to get input from the user, I should tell the user to put some input in. So that's a, that's a prompt or a print statement. SYSO control space will auto fill in the system dot out dot print line. And I'll tell the user to enter a word. I'm going to, I like to put a colon and a space and maybe not use a print line, but just use a print statement. Um, this way, the word that they enter will be right after that colon space. Uh, and then we'll use our scanner, and we're going to save that word in like maybe a temporary location. So I need to give that a name. String, let's just call it temp equals, you know, it's temporary because I'm going to get it, and then I'm going to return it back to main, and it's going to be saved in token. So this is going to be console dot next. And that's going to read the first token that the user enters and return it, or and assign it to temp, excuse me. And then we want to return that variable temp. So you might try this. Let's run it and see what happens. And then you'll notice, OK, enter a word, John. It doesn't do anything, right? I mean, it worked. I got the word. I entered the word. But then what? Well, the then what is we didn't do anything with this token. So if we want to check if it worked, maybe we need a print line statement to print that token out. Okay, how did I get behind? I got behind somehow and I don't know how to fix it. All right, doesn't matter. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um, so let's run it again. And we'll notice, you know, if I enter a single word and hit enter, it prints that word out, John. But if I enter in several words, like John is having, a great day. Hit enter. Again, it's only going to read the first token, which is up to the white space, or so up to the space. Um, in this case, the space is after the word John or the name John. OK, so that console, that scanner was not passed in. Look, there's a little error here, a warning that says, we never closed the scanner. Um, I'm just going to leave it open for now. It's not a big deal. Um, 
the what happened i did this program before and when i closed it it gave me an error in the next part so i'm just going to leave it for now it's not a big deal um we're fine for now okay but it's something you could look at at some point and say okay does that work uh if we want to check that i mean we, we could close it right here console.close and we'll notice that the warning symbol went away and if we run it again hello it works and you could run this a few times and try it. Um, I'm gonna leave it there and you'll see that it creates an error in a minute. Okay, so the next part, and let's maybe, let's go above this function and just tell us what it does. So we'll just very quickly sort of say what this does. Method to, with no parameters that returns a single token. So method, with no parameters, that returns user entered word or token. Okay, the next function, let's go ahead and go down here to two. the method that accepts a parameter. I'm sorry, accepts a scanner as a parameter. And returns a line of input. String. The string is going to be more than one token. It's going to be the entire line. Okay, so what do we want to call that method? Let's call that method. Let's again, let's just set it up public, static. You know, nothing wrong with sort of saying void in the beginning, public, static, void. Let's say get line. And what all I'm doing is sort of setting up a generic method header here. It's not correct, it's not permanent, but I want to come back to this guy and just invoke it. Get line. And so that part is set up and it's working. But now this says, oh, we want it to accept a parameter of a scanner object. So we're first going to need a scanner object back here in main. So I'm going to declare a scanner object. And I think I can just still use the word console. You know, it's just a name. So we could use, if you wanted to use the word input instead, we could do that. Scanner input is new scanner. And again, we're getting it from system.in. And the only reason I used the word input is to not confuse us from the other word console that I've used here. Um, it, it wouldn't matter because the scope is different, but in some cases it's better to you know, restrict your scope. So now when we call this method get line, we really should be calling it with the scanner input because it says we want it to have a parameter. So in this, function header, I need to have a scanner type here. And, and then here I might switch it back to console. So like downstairs, I'll call the console input. And then up in these methods, I can call it console each time, see what happens. Okay, and then again, this should not be void. This should return a string. You know, and when you do this initially, you can just declare it as a string. You don't have to say void first, but notice it creates an error. And I, I, don't, I don't wanna have a bunch of errors at once. I wanna have errors that I can resolve one at a time. So this error is coming because I'm not returning anything. So I can return an empty string and then that resolves that error, that syntax error. And then I can go back up here. If I don't assign that string somewhere, it's just, it's going to return it, but it's not going to save it anywhere. So this, this object, this get line is a method that we're calling. And once it gets called, this becomes a string. Okay, this is a type string. That's what it says when we're doing this string here. Get line is a string or is returning a string, but we didn't save this string anywhere. So if I wanna save it, I have to, well, have a place to save it. So I'll call it string line equals get line. And then similar to the last problem, if we wanna see what happens, I would need to print that line out.
Uh, okay, so that's in main, and then we'll slide back down here to get line, and we got to write this method. So this happens in the practice set a lot. If you if you use the show header on these problems and practice it, the header will contain the console being passed in. So now I don't have to declare it. I now have to use it. So again, we're gonna now say tell the user to enter in a, a line of code. Enter your line of input, let's say it like that. Or enter a line of input might be a better way to say it. And again, I'm gonna use not a print line, but a print statement. Um, that's the prompt. You know, maybe I'll just tell you right here in inline comment, uh, user prompt. that up here as well. You wouldn't need to do this everywhere. Th this statement is just for us as a class. So like you understand as a class why I'm putting this in there. And then as you learn it, you no longer need that comment. So like you don't need to put that comment in the code. This is this is code for us as a class to understand what we're doing, why we're doing certain things. So this line of code is the user prompt. Um, if I were using code somewhere else, the person who comes along and reads this is going to know that's the prompt. You don't have to tell them it's the prompt. So the other reason you have, we have commenting um, is for the person who comes along and reads it. So this commenting is sort of like that, but this is a combination of for the person who comes along and reads it, but also for us as a class. Normally you wouldn't say the method accepts a scanner as a parameter because we can see that right here. So I'm putting that first line of code in there that tells you um that's the point of this method is really to passing of the parameter and then and then using that using that console okay so now same thing i want to save this so system out and i i can actually just use the same um sorry string i can actually just use the same variable name string temp because i'm just using it right here and i'm going to have it equal uh, console dot we're going to use next again but we're going to use next line you can scroll down here to find it maybe not next uh, there it is next line um, and that's going to read in the entire line of data and then we can return it similar to the last function so the difference here is that the console is being passed in as opposed to the previous example where the console was defined within the method itself. So maybe if we look at a little bit or better spacing in this previous example, here's the console being defined. Here's where we're getting our data from the user, first with the prompt and then getting the data. Then we're closing that console, then we're returning temp. I think I'm gonna get an error, but let's see what happens. Enter the word, hello. Ah, so I got this error. And so, you know, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I know this error is coming from this closing statement here. I know that because I, I ran it before. Um, you know, does it say something about that? It says, uh, no such element. It, it, it's, it's trying to read too much. And it has to do with us closing this. So if I just take this line of code out, actually, let me undo that for a second. Let's try it, just comment it out and see what happens. So hello, it worked. And then enter a line of input, how are you, enter, and then it works. So it is that closing that's causing the error one question one might ask is, well, what if I named this console something else? What if I called this console one? Would it work? And I'm not sure. So that's why I wanted to try it. I don't think so. I think it's still going to give me an error. Yep, still gives me an error. Um, I'll have to look into why. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so comment this back out. And actually, let's just delete that line out. And we'll take these ones out of here. 
and we'll just use console and it works. So we'll run it again. Um, if I don't close that console, then enter, enter in a single word for the first one, enter in a line of input for the second one, it's all good. Um, you know, nothing wrong with providing this white space in here, especially if you're learning. There's also nothing wrong with doing the same thing without any white space within the method. Both are perfectly acceptable and are good. What you don't want is a bunch of extra white space, so you don't really want that space. Um, again, in main, this kind of makes sense. Here's the first set of function things. Here's the second set of function things. Now we have a third set of function things, which is very similar to the last one. It says, write a method that accepts the scanner as a parameter and reach, so again, it accepts a scanner as a parameter and returns a user input integer. So it's returning an integer. We'll call the method get integer. And we want to send it the scanner. I'm going to send it the same scanner input. And we have an error. So that error has to do with I didn't define the method. So we'll come down here and we'll go public, static. I could type void initially, or I could type integer here. Let, let's, let me show you. If I, you know, if I type, if I type void initially, and then I just give it its name, get integer. So notice if, if I, by, by putting the scanner in initially up here, I have multiple errors going on. If I take this out for a minute, and I just set up the function header as void, then I at least know that the call, the function call works without any parameters. So then I might say, okay, now let's put input in here. And then we need to put the type of object that's coming in is a scanner, and we're gonna call it again, console. And it resolves that error. Then I'm gonna change this void to integer. And now I have an error because I haven't returned anything. And I'm gonna set up the return value and we'll return a value. Notice if I try 0, 0.0, it's still gonna have an error because 0, 0.0 is a double. So we have to return an integer, we'll return zero. Perfect. Now, this is exactly like the previous one that we just did because it's, it, everything's the same except instead of reading next line, we're gonna read next integer, and instead of it being a string, it's gonna be an integer. So I could just copy that code or I could type it in again. Nothing wrong with typing in it again, especially if you know, the practice is useful. So I'm gonna do a print statement, not a print line. And I have an extra close parenthesis here. So I'm gonna print the prompt for the user, enter an integer, colon space. Um, those are little things that are nice. You know, if you don't have the space, let's see what it looks like. And I'll show you why I put it in there. And then it's an integer. Again, we can use the word temp. You know, it's sort of a temporary storage location. Console.next int. And then we could return that temp. No errors. Let's run it. Hello. My name is John. Seven. So notice, no errors, um, but it didn't print the seven out. So we'd have to go back up to main, and we'd wanna print the seven. So let's see, where is main's up here? So we'd wanna print, uh, what would we print here? Because we didn't assign it anything. So, <clears throat> Notice in get integer, I didn't save that value anywhere. So I could, I'll show you a trick. Just take this out of there. That is an integer. So I can just print that if I want. If I don't want to create a second variable, another variable, a, you know, a, a, an integer variable n, n might be a good letter for an integer. I could just 
put the get integer function call within the print statement. Enter a word, hello. Enter a line of input. Today is Tuesday. Enter an integer, 83. And it works. Notice, okay, so a couple of things I want to notice. Without the colon, that actually doesn't look bad, but it's not consistent with these. So you're either always going to have a space. Usually after punctuation, we have a space. So I wanted to point that out. Either none of them should have a space or they should all have a space. I think probably it's safer to put a space in there. It's grammatically correct. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, why might I not, not do this here? Because it, it's confusing, especially if you're learning the syntax and you're learning the code. You know, it's not as clear what type of object that is. That's an integer, but you know, how do we know that? And um, I hope I haven't been muted this whole time. This is actually the second time I'm making this video. Um, <sighs> um, the joy of online instruction. So. Uh, hopefully, I wasn't muted for too long. Um, I think I just hit the button. So, you know, this is a little bit dangerous because it doesn't tell you what's going on as well. So, you know, I, especially initially, we probably don't want to do that. We probably want to cut this out of here. And we want to declare an integer. Let's call it, uh, let's call it n. n is a very nice letter to use as an integer. And then I'll paste it in here, get integer input. Usually in coding, we don't want to use things like X and Y. Um, they're not clear enough. They're not descriptive enough. But N as an integer, N and M would be integers normally. And then we would print line this N. And that kind of keeps in, in, in um, accordance with the rest of this main. You know, it, it, it lines up the same. I noticed a few people sort of in the projects were Let's just double check that everything's working. John Tutangi, and then uh, enter an integer 87. There it is. We're good to go. I noticed in a couple of the projects, um, there's this desire to not have any, uh, to make everything a function call. It, it doesn't need to be that way. Main can contain and will contain some logic. So like, Actually, here that everything is a function call. These print line statements, this is a function call. It's using a system dot out, and then it's using a method of that system, the print line method, to do something and print the print something onto the onto the console. So we don't need a separate method to do just that. It already is a method. So I don't know if that's making sense, but let's see if I have everything tightened down. I can get rid of this white space. Um, Notice I don't I don't generally comment above main. The the commenting above main is this commenting. Main is going to do what the program is doing. You might comment within main, but you don't need to comment above main if that makes sense. And then within main we could comment in here. I don't know what we would comment on. Um, you know you might comment that two of I don't know. Two of the methods are passing a, a parameter of the scanner and one is not. But that's that's what I'm basically showing here is that if the scanner is only going to be used within the method, we can put it in there, like we did here for our first method, get token. But if we're going to be using the scanner in multiple occurrences, it might make more sense to just define one scanner in main, like we did here with input and then pass it as a parameter to each of the methods. And it depends on what we're doing. It depends on the context. So both are fine. Um, it depends on context. I think on the homework, the methods that they have you writing and practice it, the scanner is coming in as a parameter. And it says that in the instruction set. So it will say something like, the method that accepts this, something like this accepts scanner as a parameter. OK, and I'm just double checking my white space. There's an extra one there. Crank it out. And everything else looks good. Uh, try to make this a little bigger, see if we can get it all on screen at the same time. Uh, that's nice if you want to pause it, or also you can just take the code that's online. Uh, I don't think I showed us how to do that. Um, when you take code off online, you then can just drag it into the package um, 
into uh, Eclipse. So if I if I grab this code on Canvas and you download it, then just go to your downloads folder and grab the .java file and drag it over into your source code folder or your default package and drop it, and it'll just be there in Eclipse for you to open it up. Um, maybe I'll show you that somewhere else, or you could try it and see what happens. All right, so no, I can't fit it all on one screen, but we didn't put any commenting above this third one, so maybe I'll just copy the previous comment, paste it in, and say number three. Method that accepts a scanner as a parameter and returns a user entered user input integer. And I don't need to say it's type integer because that's kind of obvious. Um, notice also the comment there means if we don't want that white space, we could take it out because the comment is providing the space in a sense between the two methods. All right, good. 